our segment and it's got a new name y'all jared thank you bro for this it's called the real good topics so we're about to talk about the real good topics today um so the first one dallas cowboys have the longest streak of not making it to the conference finals will mike mccarthy keep his job yeah um you know in short i think so um i think there's a lot of loyalty within the Dallas Cowboys organization. Seems like Jerry Jones likes him. Uh, I think Mike McCarthy likes being there. Um, and however, I will say that, um, you know, as a, as a Florida Gator fan, I've kind of learned this season that loyalty is admirable as a trade as it is. Doesn't always work out. We saw that with kind of Dan Mullen and his coaching staff. Um, so I, you know, it might come back and nip him in the rear. Um, you know, there's a couple things we do know about Mike McCarthy and, um, you know, I think the biggest one is his game management is awful. <laughs> we saw that last week with a quarterback draw with 14 yeah. seconds to go. Weeks before that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, especially you look at that game, and um, I think I had, I had it here. They, yeah, I don't have the numbers, but CeeDee Lamb was only targeted. Oh, I do. He was only targeted five times. It felt like it was two. Oh, it was yeah. five. Okay. Yeah, like, it, it was, it was five, different. but I think he had two receptions. Yeah. But he was, he was only targeted okay. five times okay. mm -hmm. against – a really less than stellar San Francisco secondary. Um, it's not like you're playing anybody who who really takes away the pass game. San Francisco, <laughs> yeah, San Francisco doesn't doesn't do that. Right. Um, so, you know, I empathize with Cowboy fans. I would be equally as frustrated. Um, you know, I will say maybe um, they get rid of them just to, you know, I think there's a lot of Dallas fans would rather have Dan Quinn, Quinn or Kellen Moore <laughs> lead the team. Um, you know, obviously they're interviewing for head coaching jobs all around the league, um, yeah. the, the two of them. So, um, I, like I said, I, I don't foresee him um, losing his job. You know, reports came out that, you know, they had very positive, uh, they had a very positive meeting, McCarthy and Jerry Jones did. Um, McCarthy's a charmer. I don't know if, you, if people remember whenever he was hired, he was like, yeah, I watched all the film. And then later he's like, yeah, no, I just told I Jerry that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just told Jerry that. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, he's a, it's an interesting situation for sure. Like I said, I think if I were a diehard um, Dallas fan, um, I would probably lean more towards wanting um, Kellen Moore or Dan Quinn to lead the team, but I just don't see that happening. So. Yeah. So Anybody who watches or listens knows how I feel about the Cowboys. <clears throat> they are the cowgirls to me. And um, I am definitely not of the belief that Jerry Jones is <laughs> going to stay loyal to, to anybody but himself. And so I look at this as he if he's not in his emotions, he keeps, if Jerry Jones isn't in his emotions about this, he keeps his job. If Jerry Jones is in his emotions, because this is as close as they've been in a minute to being actually being into the playoffs, right? And so <clears throat> if he's not in his emotions about this, then Mike McCarthy keeps his job. If he is, and it won't be Dan Quinn, Dan Quinn's gonna take another job. Um, so that, <laughs> That pipe dream can go down the drain. They can forget that one. Um, but I would love to see them actually give like someone like Eric Bieniemy a, a shot. This man deserves to be a head coach somewhere. And I just don't know what keeps happening. I, I don't know if he's a horrible interview. I don't know what it is. But Eric Bieniemy deserves a job as a head coach somewhere. I, it's a bunch of them. Todd Bowles, I feel like he deserves another shot. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So there, I mean, you know, there are a few others that I can think of that, you know, obviously could could float right in there and be in there. But I I really don't know if he can be comfortable until <laughs> until he sees the ink dry for next season. 
Yeah, and I think I mean I think that's something we see a lot in sports. Period. Um, you know, there's as positive as the conversation you had maybe three days ago doesn't secure your spot. No. Nope. Um, and, and I mean, you know, Dallas likes to call itself America's team for a reason. They've got a bunch of really really loyal fans. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and I think Jerry Jones, like Jerry Jones, knows that. And yeah. um, you know, I think as any owner wants to, he he wants to give his fans the best experience they can. And right now, Dallas just isn't getting that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, that's probably one of the more talented rosters in the league. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big Dak Prescott fan, admittedly. Um, you know, I, you know, you lose Amari Cooper for what, three weeks of COVID this year. That's a tough break. Right. Um, you know, you've got Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield and you're not utilizing him the right way, in my opinion. Um, so I, I don't know, like I said, I, I totally empathize with the frustrations of Dallas fans. Um, <laughs> But I, I just I don't know if that move is going to be made this season. Yeah, uh, they should. I, in my if they, if they if this question were, do I think they should fire my? I would say yes because you have shown yourself time and time again up till this point not to be. It's almost like why would you do what you did before? You gave Jason Garrett time after time after time after time, and he was showing you he was not prepared to take them where they needed to go. And I know Mike McCarthy, but he also had Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> let's 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 be clear. You came from Green Bay where you had Aaron Rodgers. Not that Dak Prescott is, but he's still learning. He's still new at this, right? So you he needs a coach who's whose mindset is of the that can take them where they need to go. It's not the talent on the field, it's the coaching that's lacking. And that's what's obvious right now. And so in my opinion, that's why if I were asking the question, if I think Mike McCarthy hit the bricks, sir, because I feel like <laughs> you're just not, you're not equipped. I don't know what it is because you, you got Dan Quinn, you've got Kellen Moore. What are you doing that is so horrible on your side? <laughs> you're the head coach. So that's the only thing. So yeah, anyway, Dallas, Y'all do what you do. I don't care. <laughs> Ainsley might care. I don't care. So. <laughs> I mean, okay. yeah, it's no skin off my rear. So, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm a Jacksonville fan, so nothing matters. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about another team. This is the weirdest story. I, Jared, thank you for bringing this to me. And so I'm going to tell you all exactly how I put it in the notes, because this is the only thing I could think about. It's called the sexification of the Bills. <laughs> Because apparently, allegedly, this is not proven, but allegedly, the Bills players are taking Viagra prior to games that they play in cold weather in order to uh, give themselves give themselves an, an advantage with not having the cold affect them as much. Now, my head went all kinds of places with this. So I was like, I, but anyway, um, that's only one part of this. So uh, the reason this is the sexification is because not only are they probably or allegedly taking Viagra when, the, when they're playing in single digits, that's what it is. When they play in single digits, they take <laughs> Viagra. But there's a tradition in Buffalo that when they play the Patriots, they throw sex toys on the field. I would love to talk to somebody within Buffalo to find out what is all this about? What do you think about this, Ainsley? I think it's crazy. Yeah, so both of these oddities were news to me. <laughs> um, you know, whenever I kind of looked at the production notes, I was like, what is this lady talking about? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, but I mean, I will say like the, the, the Viagra thing, as strange as it sounds, um, it makes sense. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of, you know, and in, in, biologically know, what it does. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, in, in terms of, you know, um, the increased blood flow and, and you know, just helps the circulation to keep, Correct. I mean, it, 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 it resurfaced, obviously, um, because Josh Allen says that, you know, his feet get cold <laughs> in the cold weathers. And so that affects, you know, that affects his uh, play and that he doesn't right. like cold weather. Well, well, my man, you're playing in Buffalo. You better. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you're in Buffalo. 
you play in the NFL, you played in college, like you have to be, you know, they have to be like the postman. Rain, sleet, snow. It doesn't right. matter. You've got to deliver. So right so so yeah i mean i guess like scientifically that makes sense you know them using that it's strange i doubt the fda would give their stamp of approval on it um but uh i'm not surprised that it's done that it's been done before and that they do it um but but the fact that it just goes hand in hand with kind of this tradition of throwing sex toys on the field when when the bills host the patriots um it just makes sense because of this whole Bills Mafia thing. I mean, though, that's. I, guess. I, I mean, if there's any team or if there's any team in the league that's going to do it, I mean, it's going to be Buffalo. Yeah, uh, I you love know the Mafia too because they do great things in the community. They do awesome things for right. players. It's just a man, but this was a yeah. little man. It, it like truth. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest NFL fan follower. You know, I much prefer college football Mm -hmm. and, you know, these type of things, you know, I've been in many a student sections. These type of things are very, uh, it's college-esque. And so like, I have an appreciation for that. I mean, they have fun. They keep it interesting. Um, you know, jumping through tables and, you know, dousing somebody with ketchup and mustard. Like, I I mean, it's the bills, the bills are strange. Yeah. Uh, So it's, it's no surprise that, uh, (laughs) different breed, um, does these kind of things. But uh, it's it's certainly strange. So. Yeah, the choices the choices are the one are the things that are strange about this. For me. Right, sex toys of all things, why sex toys? But it's okay because he said they actually saw sex toys on the field after the game. On okay, great. Well, I hope whoever picked them up enjoys. So <laughs> yeah, so now on to this next story with um. Odell Beckham Jr.'s performance in LA. First of all, last week, the catches were, woo! Oh my God. Like, that looked like Odell Beckham Jr. from New York. Like, I was like, yes, he's back, that kind of thing. But does this mean that we need to play some onus um, on the on Cleveland for not getting the most out of him when he was there? Is this a is this a Baker Mayfield issue? Or is this a yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I don't think this place is an onus on Cleveland. However, I do think it's a very bad look for Baker Mayfield. Um, and and I don't, I'm not a Baker Mayfield hater by any means. I mean, I, I think he's, uh, I, I think he'll have success in, in this league. Um, you know, his commercials make me laugh. So I've yeah. got an appreciation for him. Um, I, you know, he, he hasn't done anything to me. However, yeah, no, this is a black eye for, for Baker Mayfield, I think. You look at Cleveland's roster, um, they're not bad up front. Um, they don't have a joke for a, for a coach. Um, you know, they've, they're obviously, they're in the middle of turning this, the ship around. They're riding the ship a little bit. Um, committed to the, yeah, last year they almost, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they, they've got a pretty stout offensive line. Um, simply put, they're like, they're, they're not a bad ball club by any means. Um, so when you look at the kind of production OBJ has had with the Rams and you compare that to the lack of production and the lack of, you know, you know, he just really wasn't efficient and wasn't, um, there, there, there was obvious problems, but like I said, when you look at, um, Cleveland's organization or or, yeah, Cleveland's organization as a whole, that team, the roster, the coaching staff as a whole, I don't think this falls square or falls on their shoulders as much as it does on the shoulders of Baker Mayfield. Yeah. So. And I feel like I feel the same. I feel like it's not necessarily a Cleveland issue. It's a Baker Mayfield. And more specifically, I think it's a, a chemistry issue. Mm-hmm. Like when you just as a as that is one of the things that has made Tom Brady, Tom Brady is he has made an effort to to bond and form real rapport with those with those people that he has to work as close with that's why he and Gronk have the relationship that's why he had the relationship he had with AB even though AB didn't spend a lot of time with the Patriots that is Tom Brady Tom Brady is going to make that effort to see that relationship form and I think Baker Mayfield just never that's a that's a quality of a good good quarterback and a good leader right and so I just don't know that that's something he's really um put any effort into it's let me just go out here and play with who's on the field and do what I do versus let me form relationships with these people and I know it's tough because 
with any professional sport at any moment, you could be gone. So forming those relationships is, is not an easy task. And everybody does not have that ability, right? And it just may be that that's it for him. Like I look at a Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is a very introverted dude. Yes. Like he's he I, he's kind of scary to me, even though how introverted he is. And so I don't see him being that kind of guy either. That would, but we see what happened when they got to beyond just you know what I mean. It, right. it showed up a little bit, right? Balls going behind people, but you like what's happening? You can't even so. I feel like that is um, that is part of the issue that there was just no chemistry with the two of them, and so yeah, we're seeing it differently with him and Matthew Stafford, um, and uh, they connected, and it looks beautiful, baby. I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it's a lot of fun watching those two for sure. Yes. I yeah. think yeah, I think I think he hit a spot on just kind of uh, the importance of chemistry between a quarterback and receiver, um, you know, I, you, we see it important at the, the high school level. At the college level. I mean, it's, it's something you have to invest in. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, um, you're, you're going to have problems. You, I mean, you're going to have on-field problems. Um, so it is what it is. Like I said, I mean, I'm happy for OBJ now that he's, um, you know, he's finding his, his role. He's seeing an increased yes. role in L.A. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully, like I said, I, I, I don't have anything against Baker I think he'll have a successful career in the league. And I think it's one of those things where he's going to learn. He'll, he'll learn as he kind of matures um, and kind of transitions into that veteran status. Like, hey, this is important. Like, I, I get yes. it. Um, you know, and, and this is, you're not, you're not in college anymore. Um, you know, you don't have the same guys for three, four years. Right. I mean, it's a revolving door for receivers mm -hmm. at a lot of these places. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand the reluctancy to really invest a ton of time and effort into that. Um, but it, tra it, it translates directly on the field. So it's really important. It's necessary. Absolutely. I agree. Now put the cameras on me. 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 Put the cameras on me.